let's move on to our to our subject at hand. So the title of uh, this webinar is uh, "Post COVID nineteen personal trainers will be much more." Uh, important to health clubs. Now, it's been a difficult time, been a challenging time, uh, and it's still very much uh, a challenge. So uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that our, that our guest speaker here is, is gonna bring a lot of positivity to this situation and really give some insights into the opportunities that, that do exist uh, for personal trainers. So, so David, let's, let, let's keep it as upbeat as possible. Yep. Uh, and I'll hand over to you. We're going to break this down, actually. I think we're going to do three sections and, and have some questions in between, but we'll play it a bit by ear. So over to you, David. Okay, thank you. So yes, we are going to be doing three sections of this, uh, Julian. So um, the, the three big subjects we're going to treat uh, today is firstly, how, how this health scare is going to bring some positive energy to personal trainers and their businesses. So that's you know, there's some real positivity coming out of that. Uh, the second thing is if we're going to capitalize on all this opportunity, uh, we're going to need for, for gym owners, salespeople, for memberships and personal trainers to work together, uh, have stronger collaboration and stronger systems. And there's, there's ways we can, we can manage that. And the third subject is we're going to, at the end of the, the webinar, we're going to look at some uh, client getting strategies that I think will be particularly important for personal trainers moving forward from all this. And uh, in, in between each of these three sections, uh, we're going to have a little bit of time to do question and answers. So uh, or everybody watching the webinar, uh, get onto your, uh, your keyboards and uh, type your questions into the, into the, the question and answer box. And, uh, and we'll have a look at the most interesting ones. So um, before I go forward with all this, I've got a, an extra late statistic for you, Julian. Uh, we've oh, got, yes. uh, yeah, now France has got, uh, we're, we're about between two and four weeks ahead of, uh, of Great Britain in coming out of uh, lockdown uh, because we, we had our peak a little bit earlier. And uh, after two weeks of coming out of lockdown and opening up the, 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 the health clubs, We've gone from 100% of, of coaching sessions uh, being online uh, to 80% of coaching sessions being done live face to face and only 20% online. So that's just, just to, to, uh, so that people realize that moving forward, live face to face personal training is certainly not dead. So we've got loads of stuff and that's just after two weeks. And I, I, it's not in my uh, presentation because we've, we've just had that uh, information uh, uh, thrown at us. So we're, we're gonna move How forward. How interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that, and, uh, and, and we're, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna use this to, 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 to get some more positive out of that. So uh, let, let's move forward on that. Um, oh, uh, do I have my, yes, we've got, we've got our slides online. So uh, we're gonna talk, first of all, uh, we're gonna get the nasty bit out of the way, comorbidity and coronavirus. Um, now the French High Authority for, for Health has designated a number of risk factors that increase people's likelihood of developing a severe form of infection. Uh, that means going to hospital and, and you know, being, being in, in a serious way. Um, so you have all of those listed on your screens. I'd like you to draw your attention to all of those that have got a red cross next to them. Cardiovascular, different cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, respiratory problems, uh, cancer, obesity. Now, all of these, all of these, uh, we know not only their incidence is reduced by getting lots of physical activity and excess, proper exercise, uh, but also when you've got one of these problems, we also know that these problems are, are reduced and help, helps your recovery to get a lot of physical exercise done. So, um, so that's, that's the, 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 the first thing that, that we're, you know, we're, we're gonna focus on, 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 on that and we're gonna add to these problems uh, that, that are, are making the, the whole health scare worse, that we have solutions to, 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 work, to work with. And we can add to that other problems in healthy, healthy lifestyle factors where people are falling down on. And this, the, these are problems that are also well known to reduce problem, uh, people's immune system. So we're looking at mental stress. You know, if you get worried about things, this makes your immune system weaker. Uh, if you don't get enough quality sleep, same thing, too many stimulants, too much coffee, amphetamines or whatever, you know, you, you're propped up on to, to wake up in the morning. Uh, you, you know, uh, sedentary lifestyle, lack of vitamin D, how do we get that? We'll go out and get some sunshine. Oh, we need to go outside, we can't stay indoors. Um, you know, uh, too much uh, uh, 
sugar, refined sugar consumption, uh, all of these things that reduce the immune system that normally personal trainers should be screening, uh, a well-trained personal trainer should be screening their, their clients and working with these healthy lifestyle factors uh, regularly and permanently uh, with, with their clients to, to help them get the results that, that, that they came in and asked for. Uh, because, you know, all of these are the, the regular regular culprits that um, uh, that not only make people put weight on, but also uh, make take energy away from people and also make you sick. So, um, so, so, so we're going to, so we're going to pick on one of these in particular and just to see how important it is to reduce all of these factors that we have an, a, a huge impact on. 17% um, of French people are obese, but obese people represent 83% of serious hospitalized COVID cases. So, I mean, I don't know, Julian, do I, do I need to say any more about that? I mean, is, is, that, is that stark enough for us That's to- That's pretty stark. That's pretty stark. That's pretty it, clear. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is now, uh, uh, we can say this is a huge problem uh, in, in different ways you can say that. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's a huge problem that we absolutely must get a hold of uh, as a society, uh, and it's not just governments and, and authorities, but also health clubs and personal trainers. Let, let's grab hold of this and take this forward. Uh, we must absolutely must address this problem because uh, if we don't, what are we going to do next year and the year after that when we've got COVID-20 and COVID-21? So uh, because viruses mutate and come back in a different form the next year and we can have another virus in, a, in another year or another couple of years time. And, uh, and you know, we're not going to lock down and stop the economy for three months every year. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not happening. So uh, we, we, we've got to we, we've got to do something. We've got to have some kind of proper program and personal trainers and health clubs are front and center in, 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 in the solution to this problem. So we, we can't get around it. It's too much. It's a too, it's too big a problem now. Okay. Now, if we want to reduce this problem, we want to be serious about reducing the obesity problem and all the illnesses that come in with it. Well, let's, let's have a look at what the World Health Organization say about, uh, about what you need to do to, to keep a healthy body weight, uh, stay fit, healthy, ha ha have energy and, and not put too much weight on. Well, first thing you need to recover from the sources of stress, mental stress, stimulants, uh, worrying about things, digestive stress, uh, that, that you need to get sufficient uh, recovery in from these problems. We need to get a, a better balanced diet. So I won't do a whole nutrition uh, seminar today, but you know, the, we, we need to, to look at that whole, whole group of activities related to nutrition. And then there's all the physical exercise uh, part of it and the different uh, uh, functional force, uh, bone health, uh, uh, cardiovascular health, uh, and all, all, all the different uh, mobility and all the different ways you can, can, can get the physical exercise to contribute to, to all of this. Now, given, given I, I didn't invent this, this, this comes from the World Health Organization. So what we've done with personal trainers here, here in France, the, the ones we work with, is to modelize the client screening on, on this. So we've got seven questions about recovery from stress. We've got seven questions about the nutrition uh, practices of, of people and seven questions about their physical activity. So that makes a, a 21 sec, uh, question screen uh, with which we can evaluate people's risk and help people to see how much risk they've got and coach them to, to reducing the, 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 the risk factors uh, on, on, on their lifestyle. Now, Here's the nasty, horrible question. I'm going to ask you to give me a number on this one, Julian. So, so get ready. Um, what? I didn't know there was going to be a test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, give, give me your idea about this. I mean, I, 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 won't, uh, I won't fail you if you give a wrong answer because I don't know what the answer is, to be honest. But it's, it, I, I know it's pretty low. It's what percentage of health club members coming into a gym are screened and programmed and regularly followed up on all three of these these fronts. Hmm. Well, I think uh, while I would like that to be a hundred percent, I'm guessing that figure is going to be quite low. 
yeah, yeah, it, it's it's sure it sure is. And and one of the problems with this figure being pretty low is when we join members up into health clubs, what happens? Well, we promise res do we promise promise results to people to make it attractive to buy the health club membership? Of course we do. The salesperson wants his commission. The club wants to sell some memberships or whatever. We stick on our website saying, yeah, you'll be fit and healthy if you come to our health club. Just come in and sign the contract, and everything will be fine. You'll lose weight. So uh, and the problem is if we are only producing one third of the solution of that which gives results, we are becoming a big, big lie based operation. So we, we've got to front up to this and we've got to, we've got to put this at the centerpiece uh, of our gyms and our health clubs. And this, this is really what, because otherwise we can't, put, we, we can't say to people, we're going to bring you results if we don't put the action plan in place to help them get those results. So we need to be doing the physical exercise thing. Yes, we're good at that. Okay, but we also need to be doing the nutrition thing and we need to be doing the stress coach, the, the anti-stress coaching uh, and integrate this in, into our personal training. So, um, uh, and, and the, the, the scientific evidence on whether or not we can actually get, produce something useful, here's, here's a big positive uh, for us, is that there, are, there is absolutely no need to do more studies on any, on any of this. Uh, if we take the INSERM report, INSERM is the French, high, the highest, French authority on, on the uh, science and uh, medical research. And so the, uh, I'm just going to read this for you. The challenge is no longer uh, to know whether physical activity is necessary or not. We know it is. So we stop doing studies on that. What we really must work on building is putting in place the, the conditions for practices of sustainable and adaptive physical activity and creating an environment and support favorable to its practice. Now, what does that mean? That means we need personal trainers behind members kicking their ass and, and, and getting to move a bit faster because otherwise they won't be moving faster and they'll move slower. Uh, so we, we, need, we need people to call up uh, the, the members say, you're not coming into the gym, what's happening? Uh, you know, we need people to, 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 to create accountability because we very often we let ourselves down, but very rarely do we let other people down. So if you've got social support around you, personal trainers, uh, bringing support to people, um, this, this is really what we need to do and what we need to put in place now. So the, 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 the medical fraternity cannot hide from this. Uh, this is on all the medical reports. So, so we have to we have to move forward with this and say that supporting people is necessary. Getting people out of their comfort zone is necessary. Obviously, when they get into their panic zone and they and, you know they don't come into the gym for a week because last time they were too sore for three days. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to explain to them well, that this is normal. Um, you know, we can help you with this and 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 and, and you know uh, and put in sort of recovery protocols. And after your main hog exercise sessions, we could put in a few easier sessions so that you. So you recover, and so that it's not a it's not a whole suffering thing, um, and help people quite quite simply because changing lifestyle is hard, uh, and when I say it's hard, it, it's not just hard; it's effing hard. If I want to, you know, excuse my my near French on that. Um, uh, you know, if I want to change something, uh, Julian, if I can ask you to do something, can you just put your hands together like this? For, for yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm doing it. Yes, I'm doing it. Again. Yeah, and to take them apart again. Okay, bring your hands up like this. Okay, now put them back together. Now, both times, I'm going to wager 100 pounds or 100 euros that if you put the, the left or the right thumb over the first time, you did the same thing the second time. Now, take yeah. them apart and do the invert. Now, if you were there, change the fingers and do the other way around. How does it feel when you change weird. the fingers? Weird, weird, weird. Right, okay. So that's causing you a problem. I've asked you to do a tiny, tiny little change, just this. A tiny little change in your life, in, in your regular, regular practice, and it's, it, you're not comfortable with it. Okay, so let's take somebody who hasn't done exercise for a while, spent 40 years sitting down with, behind a computer and, and, uh, and all the, uh, the back problems and, uh, and the weight they've put on and, and the, the, the heart capacity that's reduced and all the difficulties, the, the, the mobility difficulties that they have now. I want to get these people to move and stop drinking Jack Daniels and start drinking more water and drink and eat more fruit and vegetable and eat less biscuits and come to the gym and put their weights up regularly and get out of their comfort zone. That's really hard. So yes, we need a lot of support for, to help people and personal trainers. These are the only people that it's, it's their job to do that. 
who are the people that can meet the client regularly in the club? Who are the people that can check if the client's making progress? If, they, if they're running a bit longer or a bit faster or a bit, bit higher incline on the treadmill or whatever, okay? Who can adapt the training levels in terms of the level of stress of the client? You know, if you've got a client who's slept well and everything is going right in his life and he's hydrated and he's going well, and the next week he comes in and, it, and suddenly he's lost his job, he's getting divorced, he's slept badly, he went out and drank 10 pints last week, the level of exercise is not going to be even near to what it was last week. So who can help adapt to all of that and take that into account for people? Personal trainers do all this, okay? Who can advise clients regularly on the healthy lifestyle choices? Personal trainers are the only people that, that can take the, the necessary face-to-face -face time to do this because the group fitness instructor, he's got things to do. He's got a pump bar in his hand and he's got 40 people and he's got a pump choreography to do. The, 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 the salespeople on front desk, but they've got a, a line of people to, to join up this week. So, and they've, and they've got to call people up that didn't join. So, you know, every, everybody's got his job, but that's personal trainer's job. Uh, and, and we need that, that job is becoming much, much more uh, important in our society and all the health problems that, we, that we're getting onto. So uh, I'm going to conclude the first, first part, and maybe Julian will go into question and, re question and answers uh, before doing the second part after this slide. Um, uh, that sports expertise and motivation are permanent fundamental functions of our profession okay it's not a fad it's not a fashion it's not something here today and gone tomorrow it's it, it's a centerpiece uh, uh, motivating people and helping people advising and proposing expertise to people this is really important so that's that's the first point we need to be in phase with people's needs people need us at this time okay the only thing that's really tough that's stopping us okay and i think you know we, we are part of the solution is that our competition it's not other personal trainers or other gyms our competition is pretty tough because it's called mcdonald's and netflix that would rather people sit down and eat rubbish food so um so that that's that's the conclusion of the first part um uh, if, if you've got any good questions coming up julian or things um yeah we've got no shortage of questions um okay. david yeah so i think we'll have yeah we're gonna have to Try and move through these reasonably quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a couple of questions that relate to the fact that you know will will personal trainers need to sort of broaden their qualifications, their their skill set, their, their their knowledge in order to uh, I guess cope with the with the new normal and this wider remit remit perhaps in terms of looking at people's physical, social, mental health, stress, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, yeah. so will the personal trainer need to? To, to, to broaden their qualification base. I don't know what your, your thoughts are on that. The, the, the word is holistic. Uh, the, the, the Agree. Word, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the thing is, uh, if you are a personal trainer, that is only doing the exercise bit. It's, 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 it's a good start. That's okay. Um, but if you want to optimize the results that you get for people, you're going to need to look at what they're eating. If you, you're going to need to look at what sources of stress, they, this is physiologically indissociable from their results and you will get better results. Uh, you know, would it, would it be a performance uh, requirement, but an aesthetic requirement or a health requirement? Those are the three major reasons why people come into a gym is, yeah, I want to look better. I want to, I want to be healthier or I want to be, I, I want more energy. Uh, yeah. You know, th those are the, the three main things. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you totally agree. Holistic. Uh, uh, certainly, we we are re looking at the personal trainer standards at present and looking at continuing education. So how yeah. maybe we broaden out the, the skills more of a health promotion kind of aspect to that more general in, in focus. Um, so yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. We had uh, a very um, controversial question. Let's just see if I can. Um, find that so uh, yeah hey we would like a bit of controversy so how do we reconcile increased professionalism of personal training and that's what we're asking for here david right yeah, yeah. um uh, with increased popularity of low-cost gyms where pts are often poorly treated highly controlled and used as glorified equipment cleaners ah, okay right okay so um uh, we, we're going to come on to this a little bit in the second section, but I'll give you a, uh, a little bit on this. Um, okay. 
it, I, I'm, I'm not going to say this gym treats badly the personal trainers because it would be a generality and, and, and maybe uh, be, be careful not to offend people. But um, yes, be if, careful. You, if you are a personal trainer in a gym and you feel you are poorly treated by that gym, very often the results of that will be seen in the number of personal trainers and the time those personal trainers stay in that gym. So what we need to do is to link up a sort of common uh, objective and and talk uh, we need to open discussion up between gym managers and personal trainers about the symbiotic relationship between the two what this means is if gym managers treat the personal trainers well and personal trainers treat the gym well okay because this is a two-way relationship um, we will get a better relationship the, the personal trainer will be happier and will stay longer and will uh, retain more gym members and will speak better to other people in the industry about what a good thing it is to train in that gym and so this will increase the 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 reputation of this gym as a as a hub for personal trainers so we'll then increase have greater facility to increase its personal training uh, levels I, I had a, a discussion on this if you like Julian um, uh, with Brent Halo uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Fit Pro a couple of years ago on the Viper Summit, and, um, and and Brent I knew from like twenty years ago when he was launching Body Pump in in the the first gym where Body Pump was launched was um, uh, where I was working as a personal trainer in London, and uh, and I asked him how personal training was going on, but you know how, how it progressed because we've had all the the functional re uh, revolution since the time I left. And, uh, and he said to me, David, what you guys were doing 20 years ago was head and shoulders above the practice of personal training that's going on in gyms today in, in England. I said, what? How's that possible? With all the, the new toys you've got and the new techniques you've got, and uh, you know, the, 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 how's that happened? And he said, no, the, the, the service levels aren't, aren't, aren't the same. The, the level of client focus, the, the, the human interaction, it's not the same. And so we, we have a huge... Uh, thing that we need to work on and if we work on this together if, if if gym managers and personal trainers work on this together we will go much further in terms of keeping gym members in the gym and developing business for personal trainers and developing the business for the club so i'll, I'll go a bit further into that a little bit later okay fine that's, that's a fantastic answer david and, and yeah i'm right behind you on that and, and that has to be one of the functions of e-reps in terms of bringing those groups together yeah. Um, look, we've got other questions, but I'll sort through them while you move on to the to the next bit, I think, in the right, interest okay. of sticking to the schedule. Great stuff. Okay, so we'll do that. Now, we're going to talk about this working together bit. So um, I just want you to imagine um, if you're in a bakery shop. Now, you have some bakery shops in, in England. We have loads in France, like every, every street corner, uh, <laughs> because they like the cakes and their baguettes. And now, I want you to imagine you've got a, a baker who's in the back office. He's cooking the bread and making cakes. And you've got a salesperson on the front desk, okay, who's selling the bread and selling the cakes, okay? When you imagine if there was like no communication between those two people uh, about how the business is going forward. Imagine the clients are saying that the cakes are lovely and we want more of those, but there's not enough. And uh, the clients are saying, well, but your bread, it's a bit, it's a bit fad. Uh, you need to change the recipe or it's not good. And, and we're having problems selling the bread. Okay, imagine if the person in the front office doesn't have uh, a communication, doesn't tell the person in the back office saying, uh, excuse me, can you make more cakes because they're selling well? And can you have a look at your recipe and how you're cooking the bread because people don't like the bread? So that, that's impossible. The two people would obviously uh, want to, to have so, a sort of accountability to one another. And, you know, so the... the the, the person in the back office would have to tell the person in the front office, okay, sorry, uh, front office worker, I haven't got any more sugar, so I can't make any more cakes. That's, it's not possible to not have that communication because it would, it, it would have disastrous effect on the business, which would affect the employability of the person in the front and the person in the back. So that is not imaginable by any shop. Okay? Now, that is what I'm seeing in health clubs. Okay? So... What I'm seeing is, is in, in health clubs and, uh, and, and managers and, and, and health club managers, typically I'll see personal trainers. This is, this is a two-way thing. It's not just a one-way thing. So, so 
personal trainers that say, well, why should I look after prescribing this other service? Why, why should I uh, go and meet members outside of my training, uh, outside of my paid hours? You know, um, you, you know, so well, why should I prescribe the other services that are in the club uh, to, to help these other services? Well, it's because you've got a symbiotic relationship with the, with, with the, the entity of the club. Um, and then on the other hand, we have managers are saying, well, why should I look at the business of the personal trainer? That's his business. He can promote that on his own. I've got enough things to do on my own. Okay. That's just not possible. So we absolutely must, must, must uh, get together on the ways that we are describing and prescribing to the new gym member coming into the club. Now, whether you're doing that on face to face with the person at front desk explaining this, or whether you're sending a, a video to the gym members when they've joined up because they've joined up online and you haven't seen them face to face, or whether you're booking an appointment, or whether you're, you're, you're make, regularly making appointments with, with, with gym members, with personal trainers, or, or how you're explaining the, the, the fact that personal training costs a bit more and why you should be spending a little bit more on this. Well, th this is a lot of time and energy and effort to put into this, but God, it's worth it. God, it's, it's like the baker at the front of the back office in the bakery. You, you, you're in a symbiotic relationship here. If the business goes well for the personal trainer, it'll go well for the club. If it goes well for the club, it'll go better for the personal trainer. So we need to work together on this. Now, um, one guy who, who, who realized this quite early in the game was a, a guy you might have heard of, a guy called Philip Mills. You heard of him, Julian? I've heard of him. I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. okay. uh, now, what did, what did Philip say in, in 1998? He said, right, I've got all these thousands of gym members and I've only got two personal trainers on, on, on the weights and cardio area. So what I need is to have a maximum number of personal trainers that are happy to work here, that stay with me for a long time and motivate and, 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 and bring in and... Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and retain a huge number of members. And I need more personal trainers to do that because I haven't got enough personal trainers. Now, there was a very, very nasty meeting with the two personal trainers when they wanted to put the third in because the first two said, well, there might be a not be enough business to go around if he comes along. So we don't want this guy. Uh, so, uh, of course, it was a load of rubbish because today there are, you know, between 90 and 100 personal trainers in one club in Auckland World of Fitness fitness uh auckland central so um so that in that one club he's got 100 personal trainers working full-time now paying their gym rent and they're happy to do it and, and then they're making making a lot of members getting a lot of good results so um so if, if we want to put this sort of thing into place there are a few things we need to be looking at um the way what if you can't like steve jensen would say if you can't measure it you can't manage it so let's look at this um Look at the numbers of new clients that come into the club. Imagine if I've got 100 new clients that come into the club. I, I need, this is just my humble opinion, and when I'm working in the club, this is the sort of thing I like to get. Uh, uh, I need to have at least 50% of these new, new gym members signed up this month, sitting down within a week or 10 days, sitting down and talking to a personal trainer in an appointment where... The, the, uh, the stated objective that the client knows about of this meeting is to explain to the client, uh, explain to the personal trainer what they need and the, the explain, personal trainer will explain to the client how they can help them by becoming their coach and how much it's going to cost. And they know that this is what's going to happen in the meeting. So if, if you haven't got this 50%, then something's going wrong in your business. Something, either something's going wrong in front desk or your induction process or in your onboarding process or the way you are describing and prescribing the, 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 the services in your club. Okay, so then we have a discussion and service referencing and role plays to have with the people on front desk or videos to work on to, to send to people by email uh, and, and, and see if they can, they're, they're getting a video on YouTube or whatever. Okay, second key performance indicator. We've got another 50% to hit. When we've got these meetings with the personal trainers, 50% of these people are going to walk away with a contract. I'm talking about three, six or 12 months personal training contract. So uh, if, if we're not getting at least these numbers, then if we're looking at the personal trainer and his convert, the conversion, the personal trainer's conversion rate, then uh, I want a discussion with the personal trainer asking what the hell he's doing to push the clients away because something's going wrong with his, with, his, with his approach, okay? So there we're looking at either sales training or interaction service sales training or, 
or, or, or, or whatever. But we need, need to look at the approaches of that. So we need to measure all this and we need, need to be working on this systematically for every client coming through the door. Okay. So um, now there's one guy who's doing phenomenal work in Australia about this. It's a guy called Mark Kaplan. I was listening to his podcast the other day. Now, listen to the numbers of what he's doing in his club. He's got a club of 850 members. He's got multiple services in. He's got the, the, the gym access, the basic gym access where you do the weights and cardio on your own. He's got the group fitness, the group exercise uh, classes. He's got small group personal training. He's got one-to-one -one personal training. Of those 850 members, he's got over 400 regularly taking one-to-one -one PT. Now, those are astounding numbers by anybody's uh, standards. So how does he get this? This is a culture thing. Now, a lot of people said to him, no, you're not going to get those numbers. No, you're not going to get those numbers. So he went about and got hold of the process to get those numbers in place. And, and when somebody joins up into his club, if somebody joins up and they say something like, oh, um, uh, well, I think I'll just join up and, uh, and I won't take any personal training sessions, the, the person on front desk will look at them and turn to them and say, really? What do you mean? And, and they, will, they, will, they will be positively be surprised. Why the hell would you want to join a health club and not at least take a few personal training sessions to get you on the right track to start with? What are you going to mess around with? Or what are you going to do? You know, so, so they, they, they are so positively uh, into their personal training. And they also have these other services. So it's not a, it's not a barrier to, to, to getting your group fitness numbers right. It's, 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 it, it, it's something, it's, it's in their culture. And, uh, and so we need to get the culture right in the way we're explaining, describing and prescribing our services. And we can get better numbers on this. So um, now, what, one, of, one of the awesome things that Mark does with his personal trainers uh, down under uh, is just looking at the simple fact that a personal trainer is absolutely not no longer uh, just somebody who's got the technical skills and knows how to do exercises and knows how to lift weights up okay he's got to know about his business model uh, he's got to know his numbers he's got to know how many clients I've got to bring in how, how many how many sales I've got to make uh, what's what's the average ticket going to be for how much and, and this is the amount of money I'm going to need to feed my family. Okay. He's going to need to know about his marketing position and how he's do, what client getting tactics he's going to be using and, and, and how many clients that's going to bring in. Once those new people are coming in, they've got to have the sales skills to convert these, these people into people that pay. Okay. And then once you've got a client training with you, well, it's client service skills outside of the technical knowledge, but it's client service skills to work on making the experience a wonderful experience with your personal trainer that makes every single time somebody walks away from your session going, wow, that was a brilliant session. I got to tell my friends about this guy. I got to bring some of my friends in because they've got to meet this guy. He's, he's awesome. Okay. So that, those are the, those are the things we need to work on with our personal trainers and regularly practice them. To, to make sure that we're regularly good so that we could use it or lose it. If you don't practice these things, you lose them. Okay. And, um, and, and, and the benefits that the gyms are going to take out of this, let's take a look at some of this. I was talking to Adam Powell. Uh, hi, Adam. I think he's, I think he's listening in on us, uh, who is a personal training manager in Great Britain. And one of the things he was saying to me on the chat uh, on LinkedIn, I think it was, uh, he was saying, well, there's benefits for everybody. Uh, if we put in good process of personal training management, that means, Basically, what I mean by her personal training management is this. The personal training managers mo motivate the clients. But who motivates the personal trainers? Who, who, who accompanies the personal trainers in all of these business things that we need to do? Okay, so yeah, the personal training manager. We need to have personal training managers that know how to do this. So uh, this helps personal trainers to earn more. And it's much easier for the personal trainers to pay rent longer with the club because they're happier doing like that so uh, I don't know who, who, who was it that asked the question Julian uh, earlier on well in in these circumstances personal trainers are much happier because they're making more money and they don't feel like they're, they're poorly treated by the club um, so this is process to put in place um, the clubs get benefit of this because they spend less time recruiting personal trainers they improve their client service and member retention well I think any manager in the world will put his hand up for that and also we add to this improving client attraction due to the communication from the personal trainers and their clients so they, they, these are these are huge benefits for clubs 
and personal trainers, we need to find a common interest and get work, get around the table and talking about these things. And I think personal trainers will feel a lot less abused by clubs and clubs will feel a lot more positive also about their personal trainers. Now, um, now uh, I, I'm gonna, be, bearing in mind what we've, all of what we've just said, okay, um, we, we cannot have a good e-reputation without being awesome in real life first. So what I would say in terms of developing your skill set, um, what, what was your last um, uh, webinar, Julian? You had a, a webinar with uh, uh, somebody talking about online personal training. I forget. forget uh, yeah, name. we had uh, David King, Kingsbury from, from the UK yeah. uh, talking about online. Yeah, He, he was doing great. He, he was saying that selling online was a little bit harder and he, he takes personal trainers that learn how to sell face-to-face -face first and then, he, and then they get to sell online. Uh, because you know you develop the skill in an easier situation, and then once you've developed it, you can take on board some harder situations. So that that's that's one part of of, of developing. So um, I, and I, and I would also say is you're not going to have rave reviews on your Facebook and your Instagram and have have loads of clients saying yeah these personal trainers are great and this club's great and they're brilliant. You're not going to have people doing that unless you are actually brilliant on the gym floor. So uh, you, you know we cannot get away from the human connection. And we, unfortunately, today, uh, I've got my telephone, my, but unfortunately, we're just obsessed with these things. And personal trainers are obsessed with taking photos of themselves on Instagram 15 times a day with what, you know, so showing what biceps they've got and what, what wonderful healthy food they're eating today. Um, you know, get off Instagram and get, get awesome in real life and work, with, work on your interpersonal communication skills. These, these are the things that build the base. And, and you can add your Instagram on top of that, not the other way around. Um, so uh, what, what, would lo what I'd like to see in the future is we can flip the paradigm of thinking that clubs are, 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 are the only ones providing business for personal trainers and think about the symbiotic relationship. Yes, clubs provide client bases and, and, and business, business places for personal trainers, but we can flip this saying also personal trainers can become a pole of attraction to, to, to suck new members into clubs. Okay. So, so, so getting the, 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 the communication about what wonderful results the clients get with this personal trainer, well, that's going to communicate on the personal trainers uh, network and, and bring those people into the, into the fitness club. Um, so um, I, I hope that replied uh, a little bit to the question we got earlier, Julian. Um, I think, yeah, I think so. I think so. We've got some more though. Um, yep, we've got good. some more though, Dave. Yeah, let's um, go. I think well, a couple of questions around the fact that, you know, basically uh, money is, is a big issue at the moment and that, that people are very concerned, obviously. Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of economic consequences of, of COVID-19. So, so then, uh, you know, uh, the question is, is PT therefore seen as a luxury service and, um, uh, and something that, uh, you know, can be dispensed with? If, if money is tight. Sure, sure. And okay. if you want to talk to that a bit. Yeah, uh, I think since uh, the 22 years I've been living in France, people have been complaining that money is tight. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I know I know there is an economic downturn uh, with COVID, okay, but we, we will always find the, these excuses. There. Now, the second, second part of the reply to that is, um, I've had so many personal trainers saying, yeah, it's too expensive. It doesn't work and this, that, and the other. And, uh, and I've actually gone up the next day to the same client that the personal trainer had and struck up a conversation with that person. And like 10 minutes later, I've got this person writing a checkout for me. So there's something going wrong in our sales process. Okay. Steve Jensen tells us there's not a lot of problems that better sales can't resolve. <laughs> okay. Now, now, when you get into your sales process, maybe some of your client, but people coming through the door might not have as much money as they had previously. Okay. But then that's why in your sales process, we, we've got, we have a question which is called the budget question. So there was this, which you build up the, the needs analysis of what the person needs to change and why it's important for them. And then we're saying, okay, so what's the budget that you can put in place? So we can adapt our product and our service. And, uh, and personal trainers, there's uh, Ishmael Shane came out with a great phase recently on this. Now, Ishmael Shane is the big boss of the 300 personal trainers working at Les Mills World of Fitness in, 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 in New Zealand. So, 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 um, uh, and he said, don't try to get married in a Tinder world. So basically what this means is that 
clients these days, they are much more into zapping. You know, people go on TV and, and like 20 years ago, there were like four channels on TV or, or whatever it was, 30 years ago, maybe there were like four channels on TV. And uh, today there's like 400 and there's Netflix and you can have what you want when you want. So people don't just want to have a personal training three times a week. Uh, people might do a personal PT session once every two weeks and then they might uh, go and play squash and then they might go to a judo club and then they do a weight session and then they do a group, set, a group exercise session and then they might uh, go, to, go to a CrossFit box uh, in another gym or some, somewhere else uh, and then they might go out for a run with a group of people in the park. They're going to do other types of training and mix and match and do, do different stuff. So, um, so people, people want to do a lot of other stuff now and don't just train with you. So you're going to have some people that have got lower budget because they're spending their time and their money elsewhere. Okay. But um, to, to be quite honest with you, um, a, lot, a lot of personal trainers are very good technicians. They're not very good salespeople. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a very regular occurrence in the industry. So, um, so I think okay. if, we, if we look at, yeah. yeah. And the, the, the last word on that is uh, the money hasn't appeared. Money hasn't disappeared. It's just changed hands. So you just, you, maybe you're not talking with the right people. But that's that's a whole that's a two day sales seminar. So we but we can do that. Okay. Sure. Okay. So yeah, in, interesting yeah. stuff, David. Now, uh, I mean, obviously, sales is, is a is a big part of this, and uh, and hey, and that's an important consideration in in our standards and in the training of personal trainers. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's quite uh, quite interesting that we always get we always get um, uh, a lot of feedback that you know we need to work on communication skills in our standards. Those are often referred to as yeah. as soft skills. Um, yeah. uh, but but it's inter interesting actually when you start to look at communication skills and then you start to look at sales skills and actually there's quite a lot of crossover between those those two things the way we communicate that sales doesn't have to be a hard sale it's how you yeah. how you approach your clients how, how you uh, how you talk to those clients and uh, and there's ways and means of of presenting yourself so so I think sales always gets that hard edge people think in that way but it doesn't yeah. have to be yeah, that we have to look at these skills. You know, as much it's the same thing as as, as uh, uh, exercise and physical exercise skills. If you want to be good at running the 110 meter hurdles, what are you going to do? Oh yeah, you're going to practice running over hurdles. Okay, so if you want to be good at sales skills or interpersonal communication skills, well, you need to practice these things. So you need to do role plays and and, and do these regularly to, uh, because you use it or you 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 lose it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a bit of a pet hate of mine that in a lot of training courses, personal yeah. training or, or whatever, that there's a lot of focus on the technical skills in the gym, but, but right. there's so many opportunities there to, um, yeah. uh, to yeah. actually do some role playing around communication and sales, et cetera, et cetera. And that's often overlooked. So it's something we need to work on. Uh, I think uh, David, we're going to need to move on to the next session. Yeah, okay. Uh, we the can next do that. section. Right. It's a little bit shorter the next session. So they'll hopefully give us some time uh, for some qu some questions at the end. So uh, stay with us, everybody. Uh, so um, I'm just going to start this this third part off with a with a few facts. Firstly, people are worried about their health. Okay, uh, but it's difficult to get into exercise, and it's even more difficult to keep going. So. Uh, we can offset the economic problems with the fact that people need you more now. People need personal trainers a lot more now. It's more, it's going to become more important. Okay. So people are going to decide what they want to put their money in. So, so th 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 we can positive out of this. Okay. Second thing is internet. There's loads of noise on internet. Five years ago, when I put something on my Facebook, everybody saw it. Now I put something on Facebook, 1% of my followers see what I put out there. Okay. There's so much noise and so much going on out there that, you know, it, it doesn't get out there so easily. So, you know, but we can cut across that very easily. There's a thing, gym floor and, and pros prospection protocols uh, that we can use to, to, to hit on, on, on the people that, that, that are pedaling on the bikes and that, that, that are lacking motivation. And, and we, we can pick, pick ourselves up from that. So, so, you know, we can get around this. Um, the, 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 the third thing is people do not, when, when you put your, uh, hi everybody, I'm doing a boot camp Saturday in the park or whatever it is, uh, people don't know you, they don't like you and they don't trust you. Okay. So that, that's something you need to get around. And there are only two ways you can get people to, to like and trust you. 
and um, let, let's have a look at those now now big brands they do this in a in, in a fantastic way but they have marketing budgets that go into billions and billions of euros nike coca-cola bmw or whatever you want now uh I, I i would say a lot of personal trainers make the marketing error of just kicking their message out there and putting a lovely logo on it or, or whatever it is and calling themselves david Hurst personal training or whatever it is and uh, and you're playing the big boys game with the small boys means this means that if like me and perhaps you julian i don't know do you have billions and billions to spend on your marketing budget not billions no 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 okay right okay me either okay so we are we are not in the same league as these guys so we cannot play by the same rules so we need to use the other thing what's that other thing Oh yeah, okay. We need to talk about other people and what they need. We need to be generous. We need to be giving and before we're receiving. So the first thing you do as a personal trainer, okay, you forget your Instagram, you turn the telephone off, you get Dale Cargan, Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people, and you read it. And what does he say in there? He says basically, he says, Well, you'll earn more friends and more appreciation from people, okay, in two weeks of giving attention to others than in two years of drawing attention to yourself. And unfortunately, what most personal trainers tend to do, because they want to show that they are capable of getting results, they show it on themselves, and they take the shirt off and they say, hey, look at my wonderful abdominals, look at my biceps, aren't I wonderful? And that is the, the complete inverse of what we need to be doing. And unfortunately, a lot of personal trainers think they're good at marketing because they got two clients like this, okay? But unfortunately, you never ever know how many clients you've pushed away by doing this. Okay, so for the simple reason, uh, Julian, is because nobody ever comes up to you and says, oh, hi, Julian, yeah, just wanted to say something to you. Um, I saw your, your thing with your shirt off on Instagram the other day. I just want to say that you're a self-centered asshole and I don't want to spend time with you and I don't want to buy your personal training. Then nobody's gonna say that to you because it's not nice you see the thing so what happens is I just I just don't call you okay and and when and, and even when you get talking to that personal trainer when when the, when this come this self-centered aura comes across okay which you have to be to be very fit to start with because a lot of personal trainers are very fit and they have to spend a lot of time working on the cells that demands a lot of introspection and unfortunately you need to undo all of this in your psyche when you're talking with other people Okay, so centered on other people and not centered on yourself. And, and, and that means reworking your phrases and how you talk to people and body language and all sorts of stuff. So, so we, can, we can work on this and we can sort this out and we can stop pushing people away. This will sort out a lot of problems. Okay, now one of the ways we do this online, if, if, you, if you've got your interpersonal soft skill thing working well as well, um, on your online office, everybody does their Facebook and Instagram ads and whatever it is. And you've geolocalized that uh, so that you're, you're hitting people that are close to you so you can see them, you can invite them into the gym. And you've, you've targeted the social professional category and the age and the sex and the interest and the type of the people that you want to bring in. Okay. Now, what, what we do with our personal trainers here in France is, is we actually get them to offer online. This can be either done with a questionnaire online or you can do it on the telephone. People can call you up. And like five or 10 minutes, you ask them a few questions. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you've got your diagnostic from that. Okay. With the 21 questions that we work on the, the healthy lifestyle factors. So once you've got these 20, 20, 21 questions, you send these 21, the replies of these 21 questions back to the client, client of which you've got his contact details now because he contacted you because of the offer. Okay. And you send him the, the, the report that goes with these 21 questions and the 21 paragraphs that goes with it. So that's a 21 page document that explains, basically, you need to come in and get regular exercise and you need to put the exercise levels up regularly and you need to change the exercises and you need to drink a little bit less coffee, a little bit more water, uh, a little bit less sugar, refined sugar, a little bit more fruit and veg uh, and all the healthy lifestyle things. And people look at that and they say, oh my God, how am I going to do all of that? That's hard. So, and, and, and also in the envelope that you send to them or electronic envelope, if it's in an email, you send a coupon for a 30 euro reduction uh, on your personal training sessions. 
So once we've got all this and we've got this person thinking, Jesus, I need to lose weight. I'm unfit. I'm unhealthy. I'm stressed. I sleep badly. And as a consequence of this, I'm slapping my kids and it's ruining my life. And I really don't want to do this. I need to get myself fitter and get my, get my life in order. And you phone them up and you are this wonderful person that sent them this report and gave them some time and were generous. And, uh, and you phone them up and you're nice about it. And you say, hi there, how you doing, Julian? Yeah, have you read the report that I sent to? Yeah, okay. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, okay. And what did you think about it? Were, were there some things in there you, that made you think about stuff? Okay, yeah. So tell me, so, um, tell me what motivated you to ask me to, to, get, uh, to get some help about it? Oh, b because you're feeling a bit fat and tired and, and, and stressed and, right, okay. So, and, and, and in your opinion, do you think the, the, the help and support uh, of some personal training sessions would, would help you to get towards some of these goals about sort of having less back problems and losing a bit of weight and feeling fitter? Yeah, okay, great stuff. Well, maybe, maybe in that case, maybe we should meet up and, and we can talk about this. You can tell me what sort of changes you want to put in front of your life. And uh, maybe I can tell you how I can help you by becoming your personal trainer and how much that will cost. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, so when, when are you available, uh, Julian? Uh, in the week time or the weekend? Sooner oh, the better, oh. I think, David. Yeah, sooner the better, yeah, okay, so tomorrow? Okay, morning or afternoon? <laughs> yeah, okay, so the afternoon. Okay, I've got three o'clock and four o'clock slots. Which would you prefer? I'll go for three. Yeah, okay, now we'll go for the three o'clock slot. That's great stuff. So, uh, right, I've gone in straight into double choice, okay, commercial, each time I pass the question, okay, Weekend, week, week time or weekend? Okay, so, okay, this week, soon about, okay, tomorrow, yeah, okay, three or, morning or afternoon, three or four o'clock. So we're going into process of double choice to make it easier for the person to choose and, and get, this, get this done quicker. So uh, we can move forward with process like this, okay? Uh, and we have uh, one of our wonderful personal trainers who's done loads of stuff since, I've, since we took this photo, Alicia Alley, she's on Reunion Island okay, in the Indian Ocean, okay. Reunion Island is at a rate of 35% jobless. So that's a damn sight poorer than, any, than anywhere in the United Kingdom, I think. Okay, so, uh, so we, we can't use the, where yeah, there's a downturn economic and there's a recession and there's the COVID problem and the economy's busted. No, we're not at 35% jobless yet. Okay, so we're not there. Okay, and she made this work in those conditions, so you don't have the excuse anymore. In 10 days, uh, using a properly targeted uh, ad campaign, um, she had 40 people, 4-0, uh, fill out the online questionnaire. Called them up. 10 of those people said, yes, I'd like to come in and talk to you about this because I think you can help me. Okay, Of those 10 people, she sold 10 contracts. Okay. So that's getting a process right and doing the sales training before she does this, of course. Uh, 10 people in 10 contracts, okay? The, the average ticket for each of these contracts was between sort of six and 12 month personal training package, 3,000 euros per package. That makes 30,000 euros in 10 days. How are we doing? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, just, just a little small detail. Of course, all of these people pay pay gym membership as well on top of this but that was just a present that she gave to the gym manager she said you, you, you take the 10 gym memberships you can have those uh, I, I don't need a commission on that I'm already making enough money and and living a good life as it is so I'm fine with that uh, um, oh and, and did I tell you Julian how much this operation cost the 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 Facebook ad five euros so. five euros five euros okay so that's, that's the sort of thing you can do. Uh, since this time, this is a few years ago, uh, since this time, uh, Alicia has used this money to open up her own gym and go on and so forth and so forth. Uh, I've got other examples, a guy called Sally Mathieu, uh, who's in Senegal. Uh, I think Senegal's a little, the average person is a little bit poorer than, the, than in most European countries. Yeah, okay. He's, he's making wonderful living out of, of this and helping a lot of people at it at the same time so yeah we we have the ways to get out of this but we just need to get our process right <laughs> and practice it and do it and put it in place so okay uh, there you go, okay. okay david lovely uh thank you uh yeah we're coming towards the end of our hour but i i just want to yeah. try and get some questions in there's there's a, several questions around the online side of things, you know, so, you know, should, should PTs continue to expand their, their online PT 
how's that going to work in the in the future? Um, you know, how does that relate to to their working in a club? Do you want to talk to that a little bit? Oh, okay, great stuff. Um, I think the main thing is to look at your time. Your, look at your time frame. Uh, look at your look at your week. How much time have I got to spend on different tasks, and which tasks are bringing me uh, some money in? So that that's a bit of an in individual analysis. If your online pro online business has taken off wildfire and you're making a lot of money for a small amount of time spent on it, then of course I would say to you, continue, uh, continue with doing that. Um, uh, you'd be stupid not to. Um, if, if, if you haven't got your economic model right or your strategy is not right, or you haven't got all the money you really want, you know, sit down and write down how much money you want to make and what sort of life you want to live and how many hours you want to work and how much time you want to spend on your family and training yourself and, and doing other nice things and, uh, and work out what's, what's right for you. I, th I think you'll probably find a better answer in that than the one I could give you. Um, uh, outside of that, I, I, I don't think we should turn away from live training face to face, just quite simply because um, a, a lot of people, you know, need to go into... Uh, go into a gym because that's where all the wonderful equipment is. I mean, some people, of, of course, have wonderful gyms in their home. And if you've got a, a network of people uh, that, 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 that are all like that, then, then use that network and, and tap into it. But there are stacks and stacks of other people who do not have the space at home to put a gym in. And it's, and it's more economical for them to, to, to share a gym with 3,000 other members and, and use the same equipment as other people. I mean, you know, that, that, those gym members we're actually increasing the new gym memberships right now uh, the, 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 the countries that are coming out of lockdown so all these people there they, they, they need they're going to need motivation they're going to need personal trainers so um, so the you know and for all the reasons that we've discussed for the needs of health and people and people want motivation and human connections um, uh, I, I'll give you the reply that I think it was Jennifer Halsall of it um, that gave gave you a reply a couple of webinars ago she said we're all sick of talking to our computer screens Indeed. Now I'm I'm actually happy to see you today, Julian. But I am Good to hear. I am only seeing pixels of you, and I I wouldn't mind coming coming over and doing a live seminar and seeing real people in front of me and seeing you in the flesh. That and you know and sharing a beer together and and doing all the stuff we do in real life. I, I wouldn't mind doing some of that sometimes. Too. Yeah, it's good to hear. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was uh, I was thinking as well how uh, PTs maybe you know can help clubs in drawing people into uh, into the, the the club situation. So you're increasingly uh, you know an online presence and uh, they become quite uh, influential in that space and they they could actually support the club in drawing people in and and thereby become more valuable to that club. Uh, and be able to ask for more of that club. Absolutely. Absolutely. We actually have some of our gyms now uh, looking at putting together little boxes uh, with a webcam and a big telly and a bit or a, a large, com large computer screen or whatever, uh, so that the personal trainers in the club can go into the, the little box. They can do one or two hours of online coaching and then come straight out of the box and go straight into their live coaching session in the, in, in the weights and cardio room. Or in mm. the functional zones. So, um, so we need to think about there's no offline or online anymore because there is no damn line. Now, offline and online, that's the sort of things like old people like me uh, think about that way because I, 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 am a, I am an immigrant that has come into technology. I was born without all this technology and I have become into this technology. My children are natives to technology. They were born... We, they were born with a telephone stuck in their hand. Okay, so there is no online and offline because there's no line. So, um, so you know, so these things are going to come back up. So, like you say, uh, generating e-reputation, there's going to be flux between being awesome in the real world, generating e-reputation, generating clients online, and getting maybe some of these or their friends to come into the club. So there's there's flux between these things are going to be. Again, and, and, and we won't know the difference soon. Okay, lovely. Um, and finally, uh, an interesting one. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, yeah. So how do we overcome the mismatch between rent-paying PT, who is self-employed, 
uh, yeah. gym uh, and the gym they're working in, in terms of branding, own training style and house style. Right. It's an in interesting question. Okay. Uh, but then, the, but then the statement: there is a risk uh, of PTs as the Uber drivers of fitness in terms of employment status. Right. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack there. Um, yes. I, 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 I try t t tell me if I'm on 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 focus with the question because all the, right, I will. Because there's three things playing uh, around that. Now, uh, in terms of the rent paying and the branding uh, in in the gym, um, I. I cannot stand seeing in the same club or even in the same gym chain across different clubs, uh, 12 different personal trainers and 12 different brands. We have absolutely no impact whatsoever on, in terms of communication working like that. Okay. Uh, if you go into any operation, you go into a club med or if you go into a supermarket, um, all the Coke bottles are the same color. All the Lenore, uh, the detergent, uh, the, the conditioner to put in your washing machine, have all the same color and stuff like that. Um, so uh, it, uh, uh, even an independent rent-paying rent personal trainer, uh, uh, he needs to be on brand as regards the, the communication of the personal training in that space. Now, that doesn't mean to say branding him as the club. I would go against that. I think that we need to have colours and branding and uh, and, I, and graphic identity for the club. And I think we need to have a separate one for the personal training because what the club club provides is more or less included. The, the, the weights and cardio and the showers and the changing rooms is included in the gym, gym membership. We need to be very clear that we have this premium service and it's another colour and it's another branding. And I think we can, and, 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 and then, we can, then we can obviously have co-branding spaces where you have in this gym company with that personal training service in it. It's a bit like you can buy a Dell computer with an Intel processor inside. Okay, that would be the co-branding site sort of thing. So there needs to be value created for two brands in, in those spaces. And, and that way we'd, have, we'd be able to identify the personal training and create a difference between the club and the personal trainer and the fact that he's independent and the fact that he decides what exercise he's going to put in and he decides what prices he's going to charge and, and things like that. So he's got a certain level of autonomy and he bills directly his clients. Uh, there's not a percentage going to the club. I would have a, a flat gym rate, uh, a flat gym rent and uh, he pays it and then he makes all the money he wants to so that there's an incentive for, for the personal trainer to make 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 a lot of money and help a lot of the people on the way, and um, and obviously in, in terms of the Uber driver thing, um, I, I, I think the, the conditions and the we're going back to the describing and prescribing by the club the services of the personal trainers and the, the flux that goes the, the recommendations that go between those. Um, we need to work on our role plays and make those make those relationships positive. And and, and 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 we can send 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 the, uh, the French expression is to send the lift. If I go up to the top of the building and I know that you're at the bottom of the building, I'll hit the down button so that the lift goes. There. It's send it's sending you things back. It's it, it's it's giving back a little bit, you know. Um, we need to work on this reciprocal uh, working together thing. Um, I, yes. I, yeah, and, and 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 respecting the fact that you know the personal trainer is an independent and he, he works the hours he wants and he works, you know, but, and, and, and then outside of that, there are some basic rules. Uh, there, there are some basic rules. Uh, you as a personal trainer, um, there are certain things that you cannot do in the club, you know, and, and they're, they're basic um, respecting other human beings and respecting the other gym members and thing type of rules. You now, but you know, if, if you break those type of rules, eventually we're going to sit down and talk about this or, and, and if you continue, you're not going to be in my club anymore. So, uh, so you know, and um, so, and and that's not just for the the, the gyms and, and the gym members' benefit. That's also for all the other personal trainers. One bad apple ruins the bunch. I I I saw this guy. I was in a French uh, gym in Paris once, and this guy uh, was do, he had two two PT clients. No problem with duo training, but he put one on the leg extension machine. He put one on the leg curl machine and himself on the leg press machine and he'd say okay go and he'd be looking like 
99% looking after his own workout and not looking after his clients. So in terms of the client service thing, well, I don't want to see that in health clubs. It, it, it creates a bad image for people. So there's got to be standards. So there's got to be standards. And, and how do we get standards? Well, we, we do education together and we make ourselves accountable to others because we let ourselves down, but we don't often let down other people. So if you make yourself accountable to other people, you actually make yourself better. And, 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 uh, and gym, gym owners have a role to play in that in, in their recruitment process as well. They need to have a recruitment process that, that allows them to weed out the egocentric type of personal trainer and attract more the sort of personal trainer that is open and wants to make himself accountable to, to proper standards because he knows that's going to improve his own business and improve the business of the club and we all win together. Okay, lovely. Thank you, David. I, I'm just, I just wanted to, there's, a, there's um, someone asking, someone wants your 21 pages of, uh, of uh, questions, uh, David. So, uh, this question. <laughs> so, because the last time I did this seminar in French, everybody asked that question. Um, okay. The brief reply is, um, I'm in the midst of a small change of professional situation at the moment, which we've discussed to, privately. Um, yes. I'm changing job and if I just send you the questionnaire, uh, it would be stupid of me not to teach you how to use it. Uh, and, and it would be, it would be not very productive for you, for yourself as a personal trainer or for me. Uh, and the work of the, pro there's, a, there's a bit of process that we put into that and we work on this with role play and stuff like that. Now, I, I don't know how I'm going to diffuse this yet um, uh, because I've been, uh, working with personal trainers for many years doing this sort of thing. Um, I'd like to work with personal trainers and of course I'd like to get paid for my work because I have kids to feed like everybody. Um, I'd like to make this accessible to everybody. Um, so I, I need a little bit of time to think about how, uh, how I can best diffuse this type of information, the questionnaires and the process and everything that goes with it. Um, and, uh, you know, if we can find a, a good way to, to, to diffuse this, then we'll keep everybody. Uh, so what I would ask everybody to do is to write on their feedback formula or in the chat box or whatever it is, stick your emails and your contact details and stuff. They said, I'd like more information from David. And what you do is, uh, you, my email is on the screen there, uh, david.hurstpt at yahoo.com. So uh, they can send me directly an email so I can keep, keep their, uh, their contact on, on file or they can send it to Julian and me on copy, whatever. And, uh, and we'll keep people informed uh, about the next, the next step for helping this. If you want me to do a European tour, Julian, uh, maybe we can do a live European tour, tour and uh, work with hey. people. Yeah, well, me and you, David, we'll, we'll uh, yeah. yeah. Is, hey, that on. sounds good, that sounds yeah. good. Uh, yeah. Look, fantastic, uh, uh, please uh, feel free guys to take David up on his offer. I, I haven't uh, managed to, to ask all the questions that there's just been too many, uh, but um, yeah, uh, that's a very kind invitation, David. So please feel free to pose those directly to David. Yeah, great stuff. Would you like Julian to, to make, uh, to write, write down the, the, the questions and maybe send them to yeah, me? And absolutely, we'll make a note of them and we'll forward them all to you, uh, okay, David. I'll we'll, write down a little, do bit of, uh, a little bit of replies to, to what I can, to the questions that I can reply. And okay. uh, and then we can send and then we can send that out to all the people that have joined up on this webinar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, please uh, please remember, guys, that this this is recorded and will be available on our on our websites as well, so you can you can rewatch that. Uh, but but in conclusion, just to say, fantastic, David. Thank you very much for all those those Great. insights. And Let's I guess the key message coming out of that is that you know we need to work with uh, we need to work together with with health clubs. Uh, that, that personal training is going to be very important to those that, those health, health clubs, but it's a two-way uh, communication. Um, you know, I'll, I'm going to do my best from the point of view of EREPS in elevating the, you know, uh, the, the recognition of trainers and and ensure that trainers are valued within those club spaces. It's a, it's a work in, in in process, but clearly one thing COVID has done is brought a lot of change, a lot of innovation. Uh, and maybe things, if things weren't great for you in the past, maybe things will improve. There's certainly opportunities to be taken out there. Um, but thank you, David. I don't know if you have a concluding thought. Um, we, are sim sim we are in a symbiotic relationship. Uh, human beings uh, 
expel uh, carbon dioxide and we need trees uh, because tri trees take the carbon dioxide and give us oxygen. Well, it's the same thing uh, between uh, gym owners, personal trainers, gym members. Uh, if these people don't work together, then we are absolutely done for. Uh, you know, so uh, let's let's work together and let's let's keep this sim get this symbiotic relationship working well. Um, every everybody will benefit and everybody will win if we do that. Lovely, nice nice thought to uh, to finish on. I've just been doing that uh, whole carbon dioxide thing with my daughter in her uh, in her homework. So um, yeah, good analogy, like it. <laughs> Okay. All right, David. Thank you very much, and thank you everybody else for attending. Okay. Fantastic. Thank Good you. Bye bye. Okay.